In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Ephesians 4, 26-27. So when talking about anger, I'm sure if you've heard a sermon on anger before, that you've probably heard that it's not a sin to be angry. Because it says, in your anger. So that means that we will probably get angry at one point or another, all of us. So I want to talk about two different parts of the scripture. I want to talk about the in your anger part and do not sin. So in your anger, what exactly is anger? Um, we all know it as to be when you're feeling frustrated or upset when someone does something and it bothers you. And this scripture doesn't really say that, you know, your anger isn't justified. Sometimes we get angry about things that happen in our life and it makes sense while we're angry. Maybe somebody hurt us or someone has done something to us or a loved one and it's natural and it's human to be angry over situations that are unfair and frustrate you. On the other hand, sometimes that anger is not justified and sometimes we get angry um, because of offense and things that we have let offended us. So the first thing that I have to say here is whenever you get angry, just stop. Don't say anything. Um, that's what I do. I've learned that when I, in the past, have become angry, I did sin. Um, and what does that mean? In your anger, do not sin. What kinds of sin can we commit when we're angry? So we have to control how we react to the anger. Whether the anger is justified or not, we still need to control our actions and the things that we do to people and how we treat people when we are angry. In the past, I would get angry and I would um, a lot of times say things that would hurt and um, that's not, you know, what we should be doing as Christians. Um, when we get angry, it's not an excuse for poor behavior um, and it's not an excuse um, to say whatever you want to whoever you want. I would get angry, for example, at my husband, say something, um, not really mean it because I said it out of emotion and out of anger. And when he would, you know, confront me about it and ask me why I said that, I would just say, well, I was angry. That's why I'm human. And yes, I'm human. And yes, I get angry like we all do, but it's not an excuse for mistreating somebody. So now when I'm feeling angry or frustrated, um, I don't say anything because I know that emotions are high, my temper is high, and the likelihood of me saying something that will strike up an argument is also high. So I just avoid the whole situation, the whole thing. I need to go walk away and calm down and just take a deep breath. Once I do that, then I can clearly think about the situation and try to talk it through with whoever it is and come to um, an agreeable conclusion, whether it is apologizing or, um, you know, whatever it is. And sometimes I've even apologized for things that I feel like I'm not wrong, but I think that the Bible talks a lot about people who maintain peace. Um, peace is a huge thing, and peace is something that we need to work at. So sometimes, even if I feel like I'm not wrong in a situation, I'll just apologize because at the end of the day, it's not really a huge deal anyway. And if it keeps the peace, then I'm for it. As humans, we don't like to admit that we're wrong and has that has a lot to do with pride. Um, and so, you know, apologizing even when we don't think we are wrong is huge. But as you walk with God and get closer to him, you realize that um, at the end of the day, it takes a bigger person to just apologize even when they don't think it's wrong. Just when they, even when they don't think that they're wrong, just to keep the peace. Um, rather than trying to argue your point and the conversation is getting nowhere, people are just angry, temper is high, and it, it doesn't solve anything at the end of the day and it, it disturbs um, the peace. The Bible often talks about people who keep peace um, as people who are wise, so uh, those are just things to keep in mind. So what do you do when someone has done something to you and you're angry about it or you're frustrated or whatever it is and it's justified, you know, it, you have a reason to be angry at that person. Well, what I do now is I, like I said, I walk away. I, you know, I say nothing until I calm down. If it's a situation that needs to be confronted, um, needs to be addressed, then I will do so when both people are calm and, you know, just going into a situation that's where peace is the goal. If you try to talk something through with someone 
who has had, you know, a bad day or if they're running low on sleep or whatever external factors affecting them, that's probably not the best time to try to work through an issue. Um, it's, you know, try to keep in the back of your mind, okay, this, let me try and pick a time that we can both calmly address the situation and talk about it and work through it. And then when those other times where you're just offended, maybe you're angry at something because of your own fault, maybe you've just gotten easily offended, then that's an issue that you need to reflect on for yourself. Is this something that I really need to get upset at? Um, at the end of the day, if you're offended or upset over something that really doesn't affect you, um, you know, you shouldn't be. I mean, even if it does, say a friend does something to you, um, it's okay. Just let it go. You know, let the little things go. Now, I'm not saying to let people walk all over you because people will also do that. Um, some people will tend to do the same thing over and over, and I'm not saying to do that. You can set boundaries for yourself, but it's okay to let the little things in life go because nobody's perfect. I'm sure I've upset people um, just as other people have upset me, and I've come to a point um, in realizing that, A, I should learn to just let things go and not be easily offended and b um people just hurt each other you know um that's just kind of the way of life unfortunately um and because of that i don't know for some reason that fact alone just makes me get even closer to god because he will never hurt us he will never disappoint us and i think for me personally just holding on to that fact that i have god no matter what no matter who is in my life who's out of my life who's there for me or who just you know is not i always have god i always have jesus and that fact alone is so extremely comforting um and so you know don't let the disappointment of people and the disappointment of life throw you off to the point where you're sinning because it's not worth it. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. Don't give the devil a foothold. So don't let the devil have a foothold in your life. And what is a foothold? I can define that for you. So I just looked up the meaning of foothold and it says a secure position from which further progress may be made. We don't want the devil to have further progress in our life and he can by, you know, entering through anger and that anger causing us to sin. So just reel it back in and be very mindful of your actions while you're angry. So when you're feeling hurt and angry, um, don't sin. Don't go ahead and talk about that person that has hurt you. Even if they did something and it made you angry and it was, you know, kind of justified, it made sense why you were angry, don't go ahead and talk about them behind their back. Um, don't let that manifest in your life because... When you do that, you're just giving the devil a foothold. So thank you so much for watching this video, uh, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.